Hey guys, how's it going? It is Kara here with another Infinite Magic Red video, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about every hero I've maxed in this game, and if they're worth it, what I think about them, where they're useful, and if I would do it again. And quite a few characters here I've regressed as well that I max, try them out, so there's going to be more than the characters you see here as the characters I've actually fully leveled. So first one, Catherine, is going to be, everyone will eventually get this character, and I really think designing your progress around getting her as fast as possible is probably going to be one of the best things you can possibly do. She's insane because counter attack and shield so 40 percent max hp shield at exclusive two it goes to 60 percent which is just one of the best shields in the game but then she's giving all out this counter attack which is one of the best buffs if not the best buff in the entire game as well and then the big thing i think the super like the best part about her kit in my opinion is this right here where is exclusive one so you need to be able to beat the campaign three star and then also beat the campaign quests to be able to get this version of her this is when she really starts to shine as the best character in the game in my opinion is when she has this she'll cleanse one layer of debuffs for every ally at random when burst of ener energy is triggered so not only is she just passively healing people but then she just cleanses everything off so if for example in arena ascendo is a really big issue where she drops down the silence she would just go and then cleanse it all off when it comes to dot debuffs and pve or like slows or cc whatever if she's going first she'll just cleanse all that off really good effect there but it kind of the only issue with this is that this is great but counter attack and shield is awesome but you want that last you want like you still want to go before all the enemies but you want it to be last in your rotation so she's a little counterintuitive in that sense where you want to be able to make sure the counterattack happens and the shield happens and then everyone gets two turns of that but at the same time you want her to go first to be able to cleanse so it's it's kind of depending on the situation i feel like people are gonna have two builds of her where they're gonna have like a slow version of catherine and then a fast version of catherine depending on the content and then because like before i had her e1 i always wanted her slow but then now because it's so effective i like her fast and then i think the big change this is going to be a really long time but she's going to be absolutely insane at e3 because Catherine gains one more action turn when she has solid guardians so then she'll be able to do constellation two and she'll be able to do the counter attack and shield and on a three turn cooldown which is going to be absurd and then lastly this feebleness two guaranteed as long as you have the hit for it super good amazing character like instantly maxes character like this is the character everyone should be targeting because i think a lot of progression in this game is gated by needing her so doesn't matter what heroes you have eventually you want her to slot in so you can keep pushing through the dungeons keep pushing through like harder versions of mark tower and stuff like that so every account needs this character and she's awesome so dario here is ex exclusive three and i don't really like exclusive like max exclusives on characters because for most people like people just tune out because it's just never going to happen no one's going to build exclusive three characters unless you're a massive whale so like even at exclusive three i still think he's a pretty niche character he completely changes his entire kit and with a change it's like okay well Wow, this guy's really good but when i'm trying to relate him to people that will have him exclusive zero or exclusive one he's really not that good you know comparatively and he's still uh, kind of questionable like uh, i barely use him even with this because he is passive here where it does damage it does 300 damage unbooked to the enemy with the lowest hp and then it ignores defense but cannot crit and then if it kills the target you gain two more layers of his passive that will keep triggering it but when he's exclusive three he does it twice which is insane uh, like that right there makes it so much better but it takes exclusive three to get to that point so and then also exclusive one even it feels really necessary because you gain three layers of shadow flame when disru disrupting rate kills a target but normally you'd only gain two it becomes so much worse without his exclusives but then even if you find a way eventually to be able to exclusive him i don't think you're going to be that impressed by him as a character also when it comes to progression wise he takes a ton of gear i, I feel like he, he wants everything you're going to want speed attack crit rate crit damage because these are actually pretty big modifiers and to really make these hit hard you really want those in my opinion i think the big priority is going to be attack like just a ton of attack and then just really rely on the passive but for most people the passive is only gonna hit one person whereas when i hit two people like that's when it's like okay it really starts to make a difference so it, it's really hard to say when it comes to dario i think he's an okay nuker but there's so many other nukers i would choose besides him and then melio here this is like an absolute no-brainer if you pull this character you pretty much got one of the best characters in the entire game uh, she's been awesome uh, she got the first dragon eye uh, i got on the account where you get in chapter uh, 34 i'm considering using the second one we got from the halloween event on her but i don't think it's really going to change too much because i also use sigmund and sigmund has aoe hp burn and so it probably would change but i don't know how much of a difference it's going to make there's still other characters i'm considering but very good character this is like a max like a hundred percent you pull this character you, you max this character out this is like one of those characters you you max out no questions asked super good character really happy she she does insane damage on the clan bus insane damage in um like pretty much all constant all content in the game 
the only times you don't use her is when the game actually gets you out of using her like she's insane one thing to keep in mind though is that she goes twice so if you ever try to shield stuff with her you kind of got to make sure that you're watching out for that because like for example with Catherine she shields but then she'll go twice and then drop the shield and because she'll Valkyrie and then like do her A2 or something like that so it's sometimes hard to keep her alive so sometimes you got to make her the fastest so she does Valkyrie first then you shield her on top of that after and then you can actually have the shield and make sure she doesn't die. Sigmund here this is another character like Max no questions asked super good character different like another HP burn character just like Melia but the thing I like about him is that he has this AOE HP burn, whereas she does, but you need exclusive two for it. And then he takes less direct damage, which is awesome, especially in PVE, because a lot of it is just surviving. So it's like, I really like this passive here. He also shields up everyone. So he kind of gives some survivability as well. So he's really clutch there. And then another thing too about the counterattack is it stacks with counterattack. So he'll counterattack twice potentially if you have Catherine. Really cool there. And then when he counterattacks, he's applying HP burn you know, on an 80% chance. So it's it's really, really sick there. Super good character, big fan of him. And so both of these characters are amazing and I'm happy I went with both of them, even though they're kind of doing the same thing. I think they really complement each other a lot because uh, it really helps to build a stack up the, the HP burn to five as fast as possible by having both of them. Next character is going to be Space. Uh, she is a free character. And I think this is one of those characters that everyone should max out is at least in their top five characters, like first characters to max out. This character is probably one of the best characters for dealing with bosses because uh, the combination of all of these things together is going to be her auto attack where she lowers the turn meter by 15%. And bosses have ways of... Uh, reducing turn meter reduction effects by either 50, 75%, or if it's the clan boss, 100%. So it's useless there. But in most dungeons, uh, they have like a 50% reduction or a 75% reduction, but it's still kind of nice. Then this thing right here is amazing. 40% speed reduction on a boss. They usually have like well over 2000 speed. So dropping that down so they're not lapping you over time because a lot of bosses will ramp up in damage. So you really need to have that reduction there because you like in this game speed, uh, people can ramp up ahead of you so fast in this game it, because I, I don't know how the turn meter works specifically but i'm really starting to notice it like even when i'm in the clan boss and i have like a, a 1800 speed and then someone else has like 1600 they'll start to lap that person relatively quickly whether it be 10 turns you know 15 turns something like that they'll eventually start lapping them and that's important because bosses have like a, pretty much almost all bosses have some kind of damage ramping mechanic so eventually you're going to die because they also have the speed edge on you they're, you're going to die way faster because they're going to ramp so much faster than you so it's definitely a problem and this really circumvents that a lot because you get not only the speed reduction but then you get the speed boost so it not only takes them from faster than you but it makes everyone faster than him so maybe you're starting to ramp on him then not only that you you get a, a turn meter boost every turn or at the beginning of each wave which is nice to so make sure she goes first you also have this here where she's boosting the meter of everyone and healing them so fantastic character but the big issue with her is getting enough speed on her and getting her to survive because most people are going to be like focusing on people like melia or sigmund like their main carries to be able to um, put all their investment in and food is so hard in this game that it's it, you're going to be like ah do i really want to invest on in space and then space will die or be too weak in dungeons so you're like okay space is not that good but then once you get her to the point where she can survive she's not barely holding on you'll realize that she's she's super awesome okay so Lavelle here this character just leveled her up she's insane i think this is one of my favorite characters i leveled and she's a contender for my dragon eye uh here to exclusive her like to give you an idea of how good i think she is i'm considering e1ing her and reason why i like her is first of all any damage deal in this game like if you have some way of being able to circumvent crit rate or be able to boost up your own crit rate crit damage attack whatever you're going to be a good character in my opinion like all the good damage dealers have some kind of way of doing that but her uh, ultimate here doesn't need crit already right there so i can just build all crit damage on her but not only that but her auto attack doesn't need crit on the second portion of it and she's reducing defense guaranteed on the first version of it the first stage reduces target's defense by 30 percent and then the crit is guaranteed for the second stage then she's giving on a three turn cooldown the ability to have everyone have 40 percent attack up which is a very rare uh, boost for characters especially on a character that's like a damage dealer and the reason why i'm considering your exclusive one is because it extends the duration of the control immunity to three turns and and she gets to go again so then not only is it going to be reducing this to everyone getting a 40 percent attack buff on a 40 uh on a two turn cooldown but then she's going to be able to immediately cast this move which is a massive nuke that is guaranteed to crit and has the 40 percent attack buff every single time you know essentially you know maybe like as the 
as it goes, you're going to be doing this and you might have this on a one turn cooldown, but you're lowering this cooldown by quite considerably. So this is essentially on a three turn cooldown. So it's like two turn cooldown, everyone's buffed. So you want to uh, take her in with other damage dealing characters because they're going to always have an attack up buff. So that's why she's a consideration for being a really like for someone I'm going to exclusive. So I think this character is insane. She's a big, uh, she has a big nuke there. Uh, it's super easy to gear her. I can just stack a ton of crit damage. Like this is probably low. I, I bet people out there can, you know, if you're super insane geared, I bet like 340, like 330 uh, crit damage and then having as much uh, attack as possible. Super good character in my opinion. And then Zia here, this is another staple, really good damage dealer that I'm happy that I ended up going with. Uh, I really like the boost to her crit rate and her crit damage so i have her geared like this where she has a little high crit rate you could just put her in 60 percent and then have as much crit damage as possible ideally i would just have more attack on her mainly the thing i've been caring about more is just trying to get as much speed as possible so especially for pve stuff i prefer to have speed than attack even though we can make her hit a lot harder but she's just gonna go a lot slower there my favorite part about her is her auto attack where she lowers the cooldowns of her ultimate and her a2 and then hits like an absolute truck because she's giving herself a boost but because of her auto attack so good combination with Catherine you can just concentration increase increase her crit rate and crit damage by 60 percent and 40 percent and then she'll just start auto attacking you know every time she gets attacked she'll just counter attack with a 60 percent crit damage increase in 100 percent crit rate version of her auto attack and if you've already done this move you just like immediately reset the cooldown essentially if they have a lot of aoe characters and then if you haven't then you follow up with this that does a billion damage so really good character there big fan of azia definitely would like uh, max her but when it comes to damage dealers it's like i feel like they kind of slot in i i would rather go for more of like one carry and like melia or sigmund and then i would go for like space or you know, like liz or whim like people that can actually like level up your account uh, and keep you alive then you want to slot in like a single target damage dealer because the issue is single target damage dealers need certain amount of thresholds on their crit rate their crit damage their attack to be able to be useful and so you're not really progressing with someone like this it's like you kind of want to be stabilized and then you slot this guy in is kind of the order that i would do single target damage dealers like these two with her it's a little easier because she actually doesn't need crit rate so it's like i would probably if i was going to build up anyone and she's buffing so much so it's like if a you know depending on your characters here like this is someone that you can get away with leveling earlier because she's so much easier to gear and she's uh, more supportive uh, thanatos here i think this character is awesome but niche very niche and the thing that makes him interesting is the combination of like what life extortion does which is reducing shield effects and healed effects so this is one of the most unique things you can do because shield effects is something that you can't reduce normally i think he's the only one that does that and then he's also removing shields so he's amazing in mark tower and decent against gwyneth that dungeon there for because he uh, gwyneth heals herself uh, he has a big nuke here and he does 50 percent more damage so he does pretty good damage too and one thing he's not going to hit as hard as these other characters because they have boosts to, to their own crit rate and crit damage so it's way easier to gear uh them but he does hit pretty hard because of the 50 percent increase in damage here uh with people with life extortion he does 50 percent more damage too so good character overall but uh, mainly he's going to be used to progress in like mark tower and stuff like that and remove shields and and stuff so when I got him, I progressed so much further in Mark Tower than I was before. And so it's like, I'm happy I have him, but I don't think you need a max him. I think you just need to get him to survive just long enough to have other people finish out the boss. Uh, Wim here, this is one of the best free-to-play guaranteed characters in the game, in my opinion. Super happy I got him. It, even with Catherine, I haven't reverted him. I'm still using him in my main team to survive. You know, the shield on the A2, he's really, he gets really good at exclusive two, in my opinion. I think this is like the, if you're going to exclusive him, get him to two at the absolute minimum because this extra action turn makes him so much better than he normally is because four turn cooldown is okay but when it comes to surviving especially early you really want that shield every time and so it turns it down to a three turn cooldown because he's going to go and then go again and then that lowers this down to a three turn and then he's also giving cons uh, consolation one so i'll just get him as fast and as tanky as possible right now he has 500,000 health i could probably get him to like 700 or 600,000 if i didn't have defense sets i would have like hp sets on him like so you can get a ton of health on this guy and then the big like sleeper op thing is in the aura get this aura here the recovery horn aura on him especially when you have him exclusive too because then he'll go shield four percent hp uh, heal on everyone and then go again another four percent hp heal on everyone and now everyone has a shield and they're healed so super good character there uh, i think he's he's awesome i think this guy is sleeper op and uh gonna be a good progression character like thanatos because he can remove shields 
and being able to remove shields is immediately good in Tower of Mark, but the thing that makes him interesting in my opinion is you build him like an HP burner because his passive here when he starts to when he has people under burn status so burn inflicted by gunner is based on defense damage if the target is not under burn status when gunner takes direct damage there's a 50 percent chance to inflict one layer of burn for two turns and if the target is under burn status there's a 50 percent chance to inflict one layer of hp burn so he can apply hp burning but the thing about him that i really like here is this where it's two stages of 100 percent defense damage to all enemies with a 40 percent chance to inflict one layer of burn but the the kind of hidden thing here is that when he's booked 70 percent chance to inflict burn but then burn takes damage by 50 percent of the attacker's attack so in his case defense because of his passive each turn before action when sacking two layers detonates burn dealing extra damage by 300 percent of the attacker's attack then removes burn this damage ignores defense so i believe he's the only character in the game that can apply burn and then apply burn again in the same turn and so you build him with the effect hit and mastery and then you proc the burn immediately and so it's this big nuke that happens where he just goes boom procs it uh double it's at 300 of his defense plus the two stage of 100 defense damage so essentially 500 defense damage there and does a ton of damage there so and it's scaling off of you can ideally have them in crit rate crit damage uh mastery effect hit you want all the stats on him because the, the more you put on him the harder it's gonna hit so he has a massive nuke here he could remove shields which is great he's passively applying hp burn when he gets hit uh, and then he's also applying burn here so if there's one that just left or you see you see a burn auto attack them and proc that burn so super useful character I i'm a big fan of this guy this character right here i ended up reverting her because i use her a lot not necessarily for the shield like i like the shield too but now catherine does the shield but i really liked liz because she would remove dots but catherine at e1 removes dots passively so that's why i re reverted her over whim because she does a shield on four turn cooldown whim does it on a three turn when you have him exclusive so that's why i picked him over her but amazing character. This is like a, a must build if you're needing some kind of survivability, especially early game. The, this character is just absolutely insane. Uh, this effect here with the res debuff, it's kind of tough to apply this. Mainly, I'm just using this as a small little heal. And then I didn't really care too much about the uh, being able to apply HP burn because it's only a 30% chance. So it was like a bonus, if anything. So I don't really build for that. But a really good character, mainly because when you have her exclusive three, she just has this massive shield, 40% shield, which is similar to Catherine at e e0 or e1 and then similar to win so very good character there uh definitely helped me in campaign a ton uh, to make sure i actually survive so so it's probably one of the best epics in the game right up there with Wim. so that's pretty much it of all the characters i fully max in this game and i'm considering of getting rid of dario because i barely use him and then i'm considering on who i want to actually level up next so i'm curious in the comments who i should level up next i'm curious to hear what you guys want me to try out and if you have any more questions about these characters please let me know down in the comments below and with that guys i'm out of here peace